All right, guys, it's a gorgeous day today. Beautiful. Beautiful out here, man. It's like 60 degrees. Nice. So we got the doors open. My goal today, we're going to get the inside this thing wrapped up. We're going to get the two little spots in. We're going to get the seat mounts in so that we can put the wheels back on the FJ and have the ability to kind of move it around. Um, we got to kind of, I want to get backed out, kind of clean the shop up a little bit before we move on to the front floors and the fender and door, get all that stuff straightened out. Um, I'm out here, should already be working. There it is. Been looking for a Sharpie for 30 minutes, so. All right, guys, these are the back seat mounts i got them out of the cab blasting cabinet tried to clean them up as much as i could um a little bit more or something else i guess but it's hard to get up in them little nooks and crannies you can see this one has the most shape this one is this part is completely gone so now we got to figure out what we're going to do how we're going to do this to mount these back because you can see we don't have much all right so here's what we've done this was the most complete one so i just made a traced it out made a duplicate of it got the other one there so we'll cut this part off right along that line well this piece obviously to here drill some holes with spot welds slap it in hopefully it'll work Okay, well there's our finished product on the seat mount. We got a few holes drilled for spot welds. Don't judge those welds. I know I'm not technically stacking dimes or anything with those, but they're penetrated, they're strong. It was weird because this metal varies in thickness because of the rust that was on it. So some spots welded good, some didn't, as usually is the case. I left that right there was where this thing originally had like a kink up in it for the original panel. I just left it open instead of trying to beat the snot out of everything and get it down. Uh, it's fine. It ain't going nowhere for what it is. We're gonna coat the backside, clean all that staining off, get it good and shiny. And um, we've got the panel inside ready to go. It's, uh, I took a flap disc. I know you may see, you know, we're cleaning up the metal with a wheel and you may see some of this still staining before we put any coating on there or call thing anything anything done or finished i am going back over with a flat disc shining it getting all of that old staining and and whatever a little bit of rust particles are left getting all that cleaned out and um what i can put in the blasting cabinet and i'm putting it in there and getting it cleaned up so we are going back in these places the metal is clean before we ever start coating it so if you've noticed that we're we're doing our best with it so anyway i'm gonna get this coated i'm gonna get the other side it's welded up now i'm letting it cool and i'm gonna drill the holes for that spot weld get it coated on the back side and then we'll get these babies slapped in so there they are they're in you can kind of see the shape of them and this guy's in so what i did was i just took the seat i had some measurements and stuff like that um as to where they were but it's hard to hold them up there and measure so i just snapped the seat back into the top rail that let it hang to get my height and really pretty obvious once you put the plate in there and and coupled it kind of where it went it was pretty pretty straightforward looking at my pictures and stuff like that it was pretty easy to judge where they should go so i tacked them in made sure the seat open and close real easy, which it did. So they're now fully welded in. I'm gonna throw the back seat backrest back in it. And uh, I think we can call that part done. Then all I gotta do is weld this little guy in down here. It's cut out, it's it's uh, laying right there. So get that welded in and I'm done for the day out here. That will wrap up this whole back area. We got some cleaning up to do and seam sealing and all that kind of junk to do. As far as cutting and welding, that will finish us up back here. 
then we're gonna move up there take this door off that fender off get that straightened up and uh just keep plugging along As you can see, it's fully latched on both sides. It's not going anywhere. It uh, swivels and does just like it's supposed to. I still got, I got to come back in and bolt the little top caps, you know, that go on. But back seat is back in. It's solid. No more rust holes. All of this stuff that we're doing, you can see that side a little better. I mean, it all gets covered by these anyway so I, that's why i'm not worried about even grinding out the wells or nothing like that we're going to prime them up and they'll be sealed and clean i'm not going to spend no time in there cleaning all that mess up and when i can be moving on working on something else because they're going to be covered it's more like i said like we've been saying it's in this area more about function than it is form so back seats in i'm gonna weld this little plug in a hole and i'm calling it a day all right guys well it's a new day and beautiful beautiful weather and so we've got the FJ out here. And as you've seen, we've got the back half inside is all done. It's all solid up. We still got to do seam sealer and primer. We will do all of that at one time. We'll just kind of go through the whole thing. Uh, you know, the old, the old song time is on my side. Well, time hadn't been on my side lately. So I haven't been getting as much done on the FJ as I, as I wanted to. So since like a whole week has passed since you saw the inside being worked on and here we are now. I've, I've had so much going on that I just haven't been able to put a whole lot into it. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna get the fender and the door pulled off. We're gonna get them off because as you know, they are really boogered up right here. And the fender seems to be lined up somewhat okay. Just judging by the cowl and stuff, the fender's close and it's the door um, because it's hitting, you know, hard. And so we're going to get the door undone and pulled off. We're going to get the fender undone and pulled off because we want to be able to dolly this all back out nice and flush. We've got some hammering to do here where it's smashed in a little bit there. And so we're going to just get this whole fender straightened back out. We're going to get the door straightened back out because it's also broke right here and so the door skin can just be pulled out so we're gonna get all that cleaned up clamp back together re-weld it and kind of get the the structure back in the door and then we'll proceed with lining it back up but while they're off we're gonna go ahead and get the floor fixed on both sides and um that way that'll be easier to work on without the door and stuff in the way and then we'll put these back on but for today because andrew wants to get the video worked out so she can get it uploaded and, and get this out so we're going to get this stuff pulled off and see kind of what's going on there and start working on straightening this stuff out. So anyway, as you can see by the time lapse, I've been working on this fender for a minute. I now know why these Toyota stay together so well, because they are bolted. Every every square inch has a bolt on this thing. So I thought this is going to be the worst part. We got all of these three in here undone, all these around the front. Front's loose, but then back in here, it's bolted all the way down that firewall with. Let's see, one, two at the bottom, three, four, five bolts up the firewall on the inside and then one here on top. So I don't think I've ever seen a fender bolted as many times as this one is bolted. But we're getting there. I've only got a few and I've only broke, I think three. 
So it's not too bad. I keep finding new bolts and there's so much mud under here that some of them are hiding. I think this is the final one. cable runs through the fender. Why? Why would you do that? guys i'm sorry y'all had to watch that i know that was probably excruciating me figuring out this but hey we got it off oh this looks beautiful no rot no rust in here the fact that i only broke off three bolts not too bad so as you saw we had to pull the heater box or the blower motor, not the heater box, the blower motor off. It was bolted there to the inner fender. It's got a four, 10 millimeters. Then you had all of these right here. Then you had all of those in there, all those up there, all these in here. So a lot of bolts, never seen that many bolts on the fender before, but maybe why people do what they do to Toyotas and they just kind of stay together. So quite the possibility. All right, with the door, pretty straightforward. Looks like only four bolts to it. No, should be no surprises there. But the fender looks pretty good. There's no, it's not rotted or anything on the inside. It's just, you know, it's actually not bad. That's just dirt, it looks like rust, but it's just clay. Fenders are actually really, really solid all the way around so we're going to get them straightened up get this edge right here that's been beat up we're going to get that dollied out <laughs> All this is solid. All looks really good. And the threads and, and the where the bolt was missing don't look like they're stripped out or anything. It looks like the bolt was just missing. Um, yeah, the door just she's been chewed up. But actually looking at the seam sealer. Trying to figure out what happened here. This may explain some stuff. Now, this may be nothing, but it looks like you can see the gap where the seam sealer was and the door was. It looks like the door scan has been pulled forward, as you can see right here. And that could explain why it was hitting the front fender it's funny you know you always look at the damage on these old vehicles i know on my on my car 
I have uh, that every dent, every fender, every panel on that thing had dents and rust and horrible repairs. And sometimes you would love to know the story of like what happened right here, like what what happened, you know, <laughs> to to cause this and how it ended and got to that point. But it's all fixable. It's all doable. But you can see right there, it's it's definitely not not hammered, not put back in where it's supposed to be. You can see the line where it should be. So looks like they just kind of tried to beat it, pulled it out a little bit, and but didn't didn't quite get something back right. So anyway, and I actually have this chrome trim right here. This where the strip and seal. Uh, it's kind of bent up and beat up, but I actually have some of those because I used to have a '62 for a short period of time. Um, I had it and. And I'd bought a bunch of stuff because I was going to fully restore it. And um, it just wasn't a good time. I, I was in the middle of doing the Super B and it had a lot of rust on it. And so anyway, it just didn't happen. But I had collected some of those. So we can replace this one here and maybe some of the other ones that are that are beaten, banged up. But you can see it's broke there. The weld is broke. So we got to get this thing stripped down and. We'll go at it, but you can see the floor is good. That's that's bad, but it's not bad. Because I was expecting when we tore the insulation out that it could possibly be rotted all the way back up into here. But for it just to be right here is I'll take it. I'll I'll take that all day. So and the other side looks exactly the same. So that's just from windows leaking or being left down or something like that. And it just uh, puddling up right there on that spot. So we're going to get that cut out. We wanted to do that in this video, guys, but it just it's just not going to happen. We Like I said, time just has not been on our side lately. But we are here. This was a lot more involved than, than I thought it was going to be, honestly. I just was I was thinking that maybe just a couple of bolts and, and should be popping out. But, I mean, there was – I hadn't counted them, but you can see all of those right there. And then there's a ton of them on my socket box lid right there and so there's, there's quite a few but they were all good except for like maybe three of the real tiny ones up in the front broke off with me so that's not bad i mean considering when you looked at this thing you would have think every one of them would have snapped off but uh for only three of them to break hey that's that's not bad so anyway guys i think that's going to do it for this week we are uh we're going to keep chipping away at this thing and I want to say thank you guys for everybody who commented on our last video about the engine swap and termite. Um, that was really fun for us, actually, to to actually be able to kind of go back and forth with you guys and hear your thoughts. And 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 I, I tell you this, I'm not normally that type of person. I've never been that type of person to ask anybody what they thought about anything, as far as opinions are based necessarily. I've just kind of always done what I wanted to do and didn't really care what anybody else thought. And I'll be honest with you, at the end of the day, that's kind of what I'm still going to do. But it is nice to hear a lot of you guys kind of confirming some of the things we were thinking and and just to kind of show that we're, you know, there's other folks out there that are looking at it the same way we are. And even you guys with the LS recommendations, I, I, I hear you. And you actually, you actually had me thinking for a second, but, you know, I, I just can't do it. So, <laughs> but we are, we are saving up now and we are looking for... Uh, a hemi we are going to go with the hemi unless a just miracle unicorn you know 318 360 or something like that shows up with incredibly low miles for a really really cheap price more likely though it, it will be the hemi so so we are looking and um uh, so yeah we, we're we're really excited about that it's it's time to do it it's, it's really time to get that done so anyway guys um i'm gonna get all this kind of picked up and cleaned up and get ready to start doing some dollying and hammering and all this kind of stuff which you'll catch all of that next week's video uh appreciate you guys all following along and watching if you haven't subscribed please do so uh please subscribe and comment like give us a thumbs up um and we really appreciate that so anyway we'll see you guys next week hey guys real quick wanted to hop on here and show y'all a little something that we got um, from Telesyn Official. Um, they sent us a, uh, a GoPro mount, which we don't actually have a GoPro, but we had been having some issues with where to mount a phone 
in the Jeep because there's not really a good spot and the ones that go into the vents that's not going to work either for us because um well as you see all of our vents are way down here so if you were going to mount something to be able to look at while you're driving it being down here is not is not a great <laughs> location so this is what they sent us which is it's a really super heavy duty um suction cup and it's perfect for a GoPro mount and you can adjust it to pretty much any position you want. We could even flip it up and, and videotape what's in front of us or videotape ourselves or use it for our maps. Um, we actually had a little adapter that we have been able to connect to this so that we can have our phone right here in front of us. And so it's been really handy, but we just wanted to show you guys that that's something that we've been using, but it's from Teleson. Um, and it's very strong and pops off pretty easy. Um, here's the name uh but it's been it's been really really nice to have something that's on the dash that we can um use and connect our devices to while we're going and we don't have to worry about it falling off we've gone on some pretty rough roads and it hangs in there really well um so if you're in the market for something it it does work really well um but it is really good if you have an old vehicle like this that doesn't have really anywhere to mount unless you're mounting something permanently it's where a hula dancer was so just wanted to uh jump on here and and show you all that I'm sure there's some fj guy out there watching this cringe because i don't know all this stuff right away <laughs> Been all day. You can see him going through the trees, the two choppers. We're not far from Camp Shelby, but it's been all day back and forth, those two helicopters. I don't mind it. I kind of like aviation stuff a lot, so. so